Hello everyone, Brian here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the latest iteration of our grow light setup. And if we can sum up this video in a couple minutes, it is that our setup uses a really strong lamp. And rather than the traditional method of having a lamp move up and down as the plant grows, we have the powerful lamp and we consider the different gradients of light intensity. So as the plant gets taller, we move it from the center to the outside where it's less intense. When we look at our, our mix of plants, you can see that happening. Our taller plants are towards the outside and our younger plants are right in the middle where the light is most intense. So this is really good for folks like myself who grow plants in succession. Uh, if we have a traditional lamp, uh, we won't be able to do that because plants will be at different heights. And even if we move the lamp up, uh, some plants are not gonna be happy and some plants will be and sometimes in most cases not every plant is going to be happy in that setup so something to for you to consider when you're putting together your grow light uh, in southern california with our mild climates the grow light has been very beneficial in the past we would take advantage of our climate by moving the plants outside and getting the sunlight and then moving the plants inside but with the amount of plants that were growing it became a lot of trips inside and outside every single day and then also when they're outside, sometimes a cutworm will, a moth will land on the plant and lay some eggs that become cutworms and then they will uh, ch chow down our plants. Or some slug will latch on and then come in here so it, they get contaminated with pests. Having them inside has been a big game changer for myself. And that's why I'm going to be talking about this grow light setup. And um, this is the liter latest iteration of it with regards to the different supplies that we use. So I'm gonna talk about that in detail as well. Uh, first, I'm gonna be talking about this grow light. This is a Mars Hydro grow light. They sent it over us to us a couple of years ago, if my memory is correct, and it's been um, a really good, good light for us. And for most of the year, we use this. Uh, it's 130 watts, if I didn't already say that, which is a lot of, uh, light so we don't want to waste it. Uh, we have uh, some basil that's off to the side that's growing. I'm making this video in December. This is New Year's Eve and outside we can still grow basil but it probably would be um, maybe a fifth of the size that is that is here and very sparse so we have basil. I added another pot there um, because I want to grow some Italian sweet basil next to our uh, Thai basil so we're going to be doing that and not waste this light. The, the other rack that we have, um, I just added here because we need the capacity for, for January. We're gonna be starting a lot of plants uh, next month, which is tomorrow. And we're gonna need the increased capacity. This light was sent to us by Vivo Sun, and they sent to it to us this year. It's, um, I haven't used it long enough to give a, a full endorsement of it, but so far I like the light, I like that you can adjust the different intensities. So in some cases, you, you may not need all the power. So having the ability to turn it down can save on electricity as well. Um, so with the way this setup work is that it allows us to grow in succession um, and really beneficial, if not the only way to grow plants in succession is to have a intense light and then work with the different gradients of the light intensity. Underneath the light is where it's most intense and when the seeds sprout from the trays they will go up onto this rack here where it is closer to the light source and as it gets to a certain size or height we'll move it down underneath because this is a light that can actually cause the leaf to curl because it's really strong. Ideally, the, for once the plants get to a certain size, you wanna have a two feet separation, that's according to the manufacturer, from the base of the lamp to the top of the leaves. So that's why some of our plants are off to the side, um, like the basil and then the taller plants, like the sunflower that's over there. Um, so we can take a closer look at the different successions. So in, Cal in Southern California, our climate is mild enough that we can grow in succession with relative ease. We have different um, brassicas in different stages. So we have here a purple broccoli that's much uh, more mature. And then we have another 
let's see what this is. This is, let's get to the light. I can't, this is a, another purple broccoli of the same uh, type. So we got a Miranda right there and another, another Miranda. So here's an illustration of succession planting. And if you have one static light, you're not going to be able to, to grow these two and keep both of them happy. So this one's a little bit uh, shorter, so we're going to keep it in the middle. And over here we have uh, the other greens that we typically grow. This is uh, Chinese kale, gailan. And then now in the cool season, we can grow the bok choy. So we have the bok choy. The gailan and the bok choy, they're, they're, once they sprout, actually most of these, they're going to be consumed by the pill bugs and slugs. So it's necessary for us to grow this inside so that we can ensure that the plants do sprout and also they sprout into healthy plants that when they go outside, they're going to be able to resist pests and disease. Um, so that's what we have up there. On the top up here is the dome and the tray that we use to, to keep our seeds warm until they sprout. So once they sprout, they go on this rack and when they get to a certain height, they'll move down. So let me talk about this dome. This dome and tray is made by Bootstrap Farmer. Um, they, they, are, um, in, they are the manufacturer for most of the supplies that we're gonna be looking at today. So this is a dome. It keeps the humidity up and it keeps the temperature up. And this dome is, is, is necessary for plants like peppers and eggplants. They really need the warmth, otherwise the seeds will rot. Um, other plants won't need it, but it does help them germinate much more quickly. Tomatoes and our greens, like all, all of these greens, they'll germinate in a couple, a couple days time versus without, without it, it can take up to a week. So this, this, this dome has been uh, really helpful. Um, the other thing is that we have a heat mat. So we're going to be using, you're going to be seeing heat mats underneath these trays here. So we have a heat mat here, and what's nice about the lamp, this lamp, is that it, it actually puts off a lot of heat, and this, this mat will catch some of that heat, and it will use less, this mat will use less electricity because it's not running all the time to maintain its temperature. Um, so that's what we have, and then the other thing is that we have heat mats under here. So we have some heat mats under here, and that's one thing about this setup is that if you're super tall, it's a little bit, it's going to be cumbersome because you have to hunch over to work and handle the plants. The reason why we don't have the heat mats on the rack is because of the ambient air around it. We're going to be losing a lot of electricity and heat to the ambient air. And um, it may not actually be able to heat the plants properly. So that's what we have. And um, we don't run, we don't keep this room warm using the central using the HVAC and furnace. So it's really important that we keep our heat on the ground where it is more insulated and, it, and then we're using less electricity and also the heat mat will be more effective. So that's what we have. That's the only, probably the only caveat about this setup. Well, two, I mean, it's not as comfortable if you're tall, you're not working at standing height. And two, it looks a little bit industrial. So if you're going for a more polished look, um, this is more industrial. Um, so that's a couple of things, but it's very, very, very helpful, uh, useful and has been very pragmatic for us. Let's talk about, uh, the trays, these seed starting trays. So these are the, uh, seed starting trays from Bootstrap Farmer. And what I like about these are a couple of things. One, they are compact and we can fit more seedlings underneath the grow light. So rather than, um, adding more grow light, using more electricity, we can get more in, in a less amount of space. So that's one thing. And the other thing is we are able to easily pop these seedlings out. Once the root ball is established, we can use one hand and pull them out. And this is what the professional farmers do with their seedlings. So we want to adapt from their techniques to our growing, especially since we're we're growing a lot of our own food and produce. Um, so that's one nice thing about these trays is that they're, we can fit more plants and they're, they allow us to easily handle the plants once they're ready to be transplanted. We have these uh, 
bootstrap farmer pots as well. And these are recent um, acquisitions. When I went to look to replace these older ones, these, these pots are from Greenhouse Megastore. Um, I found that these are a good size because uh, for two things, two reasons. One, we can fit more plants because they're smaller underneath the grow light. And two, we can transplant these, the plants that are in here much sooner than if we started a plant in here because um, the root ball doesn't, will take less time to develop in a smaller container. And we found that once the plants get to a certain size, they're gonna be able to handle the outdoors. So that's why we're using these smaller containers. If you're in a different climate, you might need to get a container this big. If not, uh, if you're in a colder climate, you probably need a much larger container because your plants are gonna be set, spending inside their time inside longer. So with our climate, we found that they don't need to stay inside as long. So we're using smaller pots. Bootstrap Farmer has a uh, pack of these pots that come in different colors. So we got one of those. And the colors we use to help color coordinate and identify what plants we have growing, uh, especially if we're growing uh, two or three of one type, instead of labeling every pot, we'll just put a label on one of them, one of them and then get a corresponding uh, color. So here is um, an illustration of succession planting and how this light allows us to have different varieties. Uh, this, so we have, um, Here's a Miranda broccoli, and here's a less, a younger uh, plant. So we're gonna plant this guy out, and then um, let this person, this guy grow some more. And then once it's big, big enough, we'll transplant it out in the garden. So that's what we have in here. And then we have in these trays, our greens. It's, it's the cooler part of the year, so we get to grow the heirloom um, bok choy. And then we get to grow some of the gylon. So that's what we have. And over here, um, this, is, this is the tray that we're at, uh, rack that we're adding to, for increased capacity for January. And we have uh, this Vivo Sun light. And it's set lower because the way with our setup, we want, we're going to get, once the seedlings pop out, we're going to have them in here. And once they get to a certain size, we'll shift them to this size or this side. And then if we need to uh, move some of the plants to the back wall as they get bigger, we'll do that if we need space. And um, what's nice about this light is that if we end up with uh, plants that are much taller, uh, we can turn down the intensity rather than move the light. We'll turn down the intensity and let, the, let them grow underneath this light as well. And then the other thing about this setup is that we're using um, this fertilizer that came with our, that we bought for our uh, carnivorous plants. And we bought it from, let me get it to the light, from California Carnivores. And they repackaged it into this. They probably buy it in bulk and they repackage it into these smaller containers. But the manufacturer that makes this fertilizer is uh, called Max C. And it is a 16 16 fertilizer. We mix it in with water and into these um, trays that mushrooms come in and we just soak them uh, weekly or uh, however however I'm feeling that day if they need a fertilizer or not then we'll soak we'll bottom water them uh, we also have this uh, syringe from uh, our kids um, Tylenol sometimes I would I would uh, take the syringe and then just apply it to the seedlings as they emerge so that's what we have and as far as watering um, we also have this mister that we use for watering the trays that we just sowed some seeds in. So we will just mist the top of them. It, the watering will compact the, the soil for the seeds and uh, without over compacting them. So that's what we have. And then sometimes we have this fan here that, that we turn on so that we can have some air circulation. Uh, it's, it's really important sometimes to have air circulation uh, people are saying it helps with making the plant stronger, but I think uh, more importantly, it helps with getting with the plants uh, to perspire because we want the plants to soak up the, the water and the air will cause them to uh, dehydrate a little bit and perspire. So they'll 
to soak up the uh, fertilizer and the water. So that's what we have on that. So yeah, this is our uh, grow light setup. And um, I hope that it's been very helpful for you, especially when considering your grow light setup. Uh, whether you want to have something that is very traditional where you have one lamp and then you move your plants accordingly or if you want to get a really intense light and move your plants around. For us with the variety and the different maturities of things that we're growing, moving the plants around the light and is much more flexible than having a single lamp and moving it up and down. So that's our grow light setup. It's the latest iteration. Uh, we've been working on working through this uh, as we're growing more plants, as our needs change and our growing style changes. Um, this is so far the best iteration that we've found so far. And if, if there are any changes, it's probably going to be very minor. So with, with that, I'm very confident about sharing this setup with you guys for you to consider uh, when you put together your setup. So until the next, next video, thanks for watching and have a good one. In this supplemental video, I'm going to share with you some of the uh, pots and trays that we use initially and some of the stuff that we've grown from. Some worked out really well at the time. Some didn't pan out as we had hoped. When we started off, we had a mishmash of different pots and we would grow from them. Uh, we would make pots from yogurt containers and, and half gallon milk containers, put holes in them and grow from there. And we had um, a landscape project at our house and the landscaper threw away a bunch of these, uh, I think these are vinyl pots. So we started using these, these are square pots. They're, they're actually pretty durable. Um, and then these uh, landscape trays, these are also considered trash too. So we used a lot of these landscape trays. These days we use these trays to cover wherever we sow so that the birds don't get to them or some animal digs at them. So these trays are still very useful. Uh, when we were looking to grow from these these um, vinyl pots because they're they're not as uh, rigid, so when we grab them with one hand, they can flex or or just pop out. So we look to getting something a little bit more rigid, and we have these square pots from Greenhouse Mega Store. They last for um, a good couple to three years, but at some point in our California sun, they start to warp. And when we grab them, we grab them by the corners, so the corners start to uh, fracture. So we look to replace these pots. And we knew that we wanted to get something uh, for the 1020 system. That's the 1020 tray. And these are the 1020 trays here. And they're called 1020 because they're 10 inches by 20 inches. And this one is made by Greenhouse Mega Store. And this is their Mega Duty tray. I didn't talk about it in the main video. Um, but this is a nice tray. It's I would consider this a luxury item because it costs more uh, It's nice and rigid. So if you have it heavy You can grab something with confidence and not worry that it's gonna flex and dump your plants out The other thing that makes it a luxury item is the edges. They're they're formed in a way which has this uh, Bevel to it. So when you're holding it and it's heavy, it's not digging into your fingers uh, the, the other trays they kind of kind kind of can do that so yeah this is a 10 to 20 uh tray and that's what the the system that we're going with and so we got pots for for these trays um we saw the shorter trays the shorter i mean the shorter pots the square pots um, we got fewer of those than these long pots uh, we thought these long pots would be helpful but they didn't work out as planned for a couple of reasons. One, we found that we didn't need to keep our plants indoors for as long as we thought. And secondly, these pots have poor drainage. The the holes, um, there, there needs to be more holes. So unless we fill our growing medium with a lot of perlite and make it drain easily, um, these pots don't work well. Um, we've What we've done is we've drilled holes, additional holes in the center of these, in some of them. But um, these are gonna get mothballed now because as I said, we don't need to keep our plants indoor as long. So that's why we uh, got a, went away from those. Um, so at one point when we started to increase our growing, we thought that we would adapt and use some of the equipment that the professional farmers would use. And so we got this 72 cell tray 
and we quickly found out that when we grow uh, we're not growing for 72 of one type of thing so what we do is we grow for a variety and instead of eating you know two weeks worth of bok choy we would have you know a week's worth of bok choy a week worth of gailan and different types of plants so we would sow them in that manner and we found that the plants grow at different rates and having a single cell or a single tray it didn't work that's why we got those individual six cell uh trays so this this was a uh, mothballed for a long time we stopped using it uh we we thought that perhaps we're not going to be growing 72 maybe we can um get the 50 cell tray so these we got these 50 cell tray inserts from greenhouse megastore and we found that we ran into the same issue it was just too much of one variety to grow if we mixed in we had that issue as well and furthermore these are inserts so they would warp uh, when it got too hot in in our southern california sun they can warp easily so that's what happened with some of these um but with the 72 cell tray uh we brought it back from retirement this past winter we actually sowed 72 uh flower aster plants in here so we we're gonna we're gonna see if we can increase some of the things that we want to grow um, maybe in the future if we grow for people outside of our family we'll use this but that's that's kind of unlikely um, for the time being so that's our 72 cell tray that has a uh, potential for use later on and then um, back to this thing this is the 1020 tray that's made by bootstrap farmer and they have uh, when you look at getting these trays let me dump some of this water out um, when you look to get some of these trays they come in different grades of uh, duty so you got heavy duty mega duty and you know ultra duty if they ever make one but one thing that you want to be mindful about is how rigid they are so you can see some of that flex that's happened this is a heavy duty one um, some of the flex that's happening so if you're grabbing things with one hand that's something that you want to be mindful about if you're using two hands to grab the tray then you probably don't need something as uh, sturdy but I would recommend getting something that's at least heavy duty I wouldn't get medium or light duty um, so that's our 1020 tray and some of the pots and organizations of pots that we've grown from and um, as you're growing you're probably gonna be going through these similar steps um, starting with your mishmash of pots and uh, making your own pots but at some point when you get to a certain level of growing you want to be a little bit more efficient with your time and you want to invest in something that will be uh, durable and also provide you with a lot of utility.